Gil here at Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and today I'm actually aboard Last Affair. Actually, I think I have a, a sign our friend Tanya gave us uh, on this boat, which is kind of cool. It has the name engraved in it. But we're aboard Last Affair today. Um, as most of you know, we have our two boats side by side. I use Last Affair as actually my office. It works really well. I, I, uh, I still work and work from home most of the time if I'm not traveling to a customer site. So it's a phenomenal place to, uh, to, to be able to work from. And then I figure while I'm in the engine room, I'm going to uh, take a little bit of time and clean the, uh, the water strainers for the air conditioning system. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, a little bit of maintenance today on Last Affair. Uh, I've got my little helper in here. We're going to see if maybe she doesn't want to come in and do a little bit of the intros. Um, I just heard her yelling from the back, Grandpa, film me, film me. So we'll see if, uh, we'll see if she's going to come on in and uh, be the subject of a little bit of filming. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the video. Again, sorry, I've been traveling a bit for work. It's been a little bit tough to get um, boat working videos done. I mean, literally been traveling Sunday to Friday for a couple of weeks, uh, essentially getting home late Friday night, giving me most of the day Saturday to do things, whatever those things happen to be. And sadly, in the case of being out all week, it's mainly doing laundry and, uh, and frankly, giving Deb a break uh, with the kids all week. I mean, there's nothing, nothing she would probably rather do than be able to just chill out and relax for a little bit herself uninterrupted in some peace and quiet. So certainly been helping with that, as you can imagine. So uh, hope you enjoy the video and we'll get back to more of the DIY stuff. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to get into the engine room here. Once I open up this engine room door, there's actually quite a bit of room. I can climb down inside here pretty easily. Well, the good news is I got a little light in here. I'll be able to see pretty good. So let me see if I can't show what's going on here. And go so quite a bit of space what we're gonna do is I think I'm gonna start right here because I want to get the air conditioner back on fairly quick um, but uh, right here is the strainer for the air conditioner All right, so just give you a little idea we have the seacock right down here in the hull it kind of goes up into um, this strainer right here and from the strainer it runs into the large air conditioner water pump it comes out of that and it goes into this teeing system and the reason I have a teeing system here is I have single pump actually supplies water to both the forward and rear air conditioning units so um, the one strainer will actually take care of both. It starts with a fairly simple task of turning off the seacock, which by the way is easier to do when not holding the camera. But there. It really isn't too hard. I've got a little container here I'm just going to use to kind of capture this stuff. Some of this water will leak out. I've already turned off the rear air conditioning and I've turned off the, the actual uh, water circulation pump here. Um, so it's just now a matter of uh, Taking this top off, and like I said, I'll get a little bit of water flowing out over here, but it won't be too bad. I've got the lid, and you can definitely see it's got some, some brown funk on it, to be expected. And now I'm going to just reach in here and pull the strainer out, and it's pretty nasty. So... So nothing overly fancy. I use a toilet brush that I bought that was about the right size of this. And the reason I do this is it, um, it allows me to essentially clean this out pretty well. And what I'm really wanting to do is um, not mix this up real bad. I don't want to just break all this loose and have it go into the lines. I'm really looking to get it down here into this little container. So you'll notice what I'll well, I guess you won't notice because I have this thing too low. What I'm basically doing is just taking this and tapping it right on there and getting some of the gross stuff uh, off of the brush and into that. And that's, that's pretty much it. Just a matter of repeating a couple of times here and running along the top of this too. And when I see the bristles through the clear sight glass and I'm feeling a little better about the way it's set up here. All right, got a bunch out, Took a couple more runs here. I don't know how well you can see that on the front of the sight glass, but you can just kind of see the bristles there, which is good. That's what we're wanting. So the other thing I like to do when possible here is I'm going to kind of stick this thing right underneath here, and I'm going to open up the seacock for just a second, let a little bit of water run in. And what I'm trying to do is essentially flush some of this stuff out and I'd rather it flushes over the side and into this bowl than into the lines and potentially up into the uh, potentially up into the air conditioner pump itself. So I'm getting about 75% of the water in this little bucket which is helpful um, and now it's just a matter of cleaning this up. We'll take it to the sink and do that. 
Okay, so I've got my little parts right here and we're just gonna go ahead and start scrubbing this. I've got a screen down in the sink. I'm gonna do it right here in the screen, or in the sink. And as I mentioned before, my fresh water pump was kind of running, it's leaking. I have a very little low pressure here, at least until I get that fixed. But I wanted to get the uh, lines going here so I can get the air conditioner kicked back on sooner rather than later. And that's the part I decided to concentrate on first. I got the top clean. You can see I have this O-rings here. I want to make sure those get nice and clean. And I actually like to use really hot water when I do this. It seems to certainly clean it up a little better. So just like I was showing you before, I use this toilet, this is the screener, the strainer right here, or the screen. I, um, I use the toilet brush on this too. It works really well for getting in the inside and getting on the outside. You can already start to see it's getting clean here. This stuff as the chafunk to funk. It's uh, pretty thick in this river. So I'm not worried about the discoloration and this not being white. I, what I really want to make sure of is that I'm going to have openings here. You watching me? That yucky. Yeah, it smells a little bit, doesn't it? That part looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna clean out this nasty part here. And clean my brush out a little bit. Just cleaning this goop out of the drain screen. And by the way, when I do this, I always use one of these screens. I don't wanna get this stuff down in my uh, plumbing line that goes overboard for the uh, the gray water so um, we buy the we buy the heck out of these things i use them in everything in the shower drains in the sinks in the bottom of the tubs um, and you can buy them at just a dollar store screened ones we buy a whole bunch of them just keep them on hand they're handy to have so with that i take my parts and go back in there and we're going to get going this is um, probably exactly as you would suspect it's just a matter of reversing what we've done so uh, as you know, I've cleaned this already. It's got some water on it, which I'm fine with, but, uh, but I'm now going to take my screen, put it right back in there. Essentially what happens is the water comes in on this top side, goes down through the screen, and um, water goes through the screen and it comes out the outside of it and goes, uh, goes into the line. So. Now when I do this, in order to try and minimize the chance of an airlock, which seems to almost always happen for me, it's uh, a little bit frustrating to be perfectly candid. Um, the water level in this boat is about right here. Um, so this is, the pump has to be below, below water level, but it seems sometimes that there's a little bit of an issue getting, um, getting air in this line, and I struggle sometimes getting all the air out of it. So what I am going to do is I'm actually gonna turn on the seacock just a little bit, and what I'm doing is I'm watching this water fill up in this vessel here, and that's exactly what I want because I wanna make sure I get all the air out of it. As soon as the water starts to flow over the top, I'm gonna to take this and gently screw it down on here. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to minimize the amount of air I get in here. Now, something that works on Dream Chaser, and I never planned it this way on Last Affair, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm not sure, can you see that? I have a series of flushing valves here. Um, so as I mentioned before, I have the water that comes out of the strainer right here and it goes up into the pump, comes out of the pump, I have a, a shutoff here just in case I need to do any kind of work and I want to cut it off. And then it comes down here to a T. And from the T, I can control how much water goes into the T by opening or closing this particular valve. That goes to the forward air conditioner. This particular valve here goes to the rear um, air conditioner. So what I should be able to do, and this is what I'm about to try here, I've never actually done this, but it dawned on me that this may work. If I were to shut off both of these and open that valve with the seacock open, if water comes out of the top of this, I should theoretically have all the air out of the way of the pump, thus allowing it to um, pressurize a little better. So we're going to go ahead and give that a shot. So I'm going to close this valve. I am going to close 
this valve so essentially if I turn the pump on right now there's nowhere for the water to go it would come out of here down here and not be able to go down it would come over to here not be able to go down and not be able to go up so what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to open this upper valve and I'm hoping that water is going to come out of there in a moment that may be above the water line so it may not actually happen but we're going to see Just opened up the seacock a little bit more just to see what we got. Now I'm going to open the seacock all the way. And that's what I was afraid of. I am a little bit above the water line, so it doesn't look like I'm going to get that to come all the way out. So I'm going to close this valve because the last thing I want to do is turn on the pump and have water shooting up into the engine room. And I'm going to open both of these valves now. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the pump. Let's see if we get a little bit of flow here. I don't know if you can see this. I can see quite a bit of swirl in here. So it does look to me like it's pushing water through. It should be good. So you see that in there? It does mean we get some flow going. All right. Well, I certainly hear it. And when I come over here and look, we've got water flowing out of the front side. Quite honestly, it's not coming out all that strong, which is a little concerning, but let's uh, see what we got on the other side. I just went ahead and switched the valves, essentially shutting off the valve on the port side for the forward air conditioner and turning on the one to the starboard side. And we can see that one's shooting out of the boat pretty good. Uh, a little noisy, but let's see, that's probably enough flow for the air conditioner. It looks good. Go on back down below and check it out. Same. And just open up the panel here and we'll flip on the air conditioner itself. Close the engine room door. All right, certainly kicked on. It's cool. Uh, the air conditioner vents right by my feet. It certainly is cooling right down. So yippee, that's good stuff. Good stuff. But I'm really excited. In about a month or so, um, Jason and Nikki, previously of Naughty Veterans, um, I believe the name of their boat is going to be uh, Naughty Ohana, so sailing vessel Naughty Ohana, um, recently got themselves a Formosa. And they're making their road trip from where they sold their home um, on their way ac across to the East Coast and they're gonna swing by and I'm thrilled that they're gonna stop by for a day um, we, we'd love to have them on board love to sort of talk story and uh, I'm really excited so Jason and Nikki looking forward to seeing you guys it's gonna be really cool um, hey everybody thanks for watching and please follow us on Facebook Twitter Instagram or even tumblr please take a moment and go over to our website at s vdreamchaser.com to download free resources for cruising and how-to projects. Get your thumbs and mouses ready. We also have a couple of links right on the screen for some other playlists and videos that we think you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching fellow dreamers.